Hello, thank you so much for clicking play. I hope you're doing well. Well, Jesus told us to go and make disciples of all nations. He did not say go and make converts. He said disciples. Well, there is a very important aspect of making disciples, and it's revealed in a little bit more obscure portion of the scriptures, Isaiah 44, 7. Here's what God says. Who is like me? Let him proclaim and declare it. Yes, let him recount it to me in order from the time that I established the ancient nation and let them declare to them the things that are coming and the events that are going to take place. Verse eight, he says, do not be afraid. You are my witnesses. Wow. So we learn here how important it is to God that we learn Bible prophecy. That is part of being Christ-like. Jesus had to learn Bible prophecy. I'm sure it took him a long time. You know, he had the Holy Spirit to help him. We have the Holy Spirit to help us. Well, some might say, well, Sue, it's so divisive to be even talking about Bible prophecy. And I will agree, it can be divisive. However, we fail to realize that many people are studying Bible prophecy together and very harmoniously. There is a way to do it with respect and honor to each other. If you are teachable, you're with a group of teachable, humble people that really want to shake off churchy traditions from them, well, yeah, they're going to be it's going to be a very harmonious group. And there's a couple of reasons why God wants us to study Bible prophecy and be able to proclaim it with confidence. He says in Revelation 19, 10, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Wow. So what I suggest, because I want to give you tips, I want to equip you for fulfilling this instruction of God's, but pray right now that God will pour out on you the spirit of prophecy, that he will guide you to the prophetic passages, to the types and shadows, and help you properly discern and interpret them. You know, it's only the Bible that has Bible prophecy, that, that foretells the future, and very accurately. What trips us up the most is the, the when. I mean, it's one thing to find out what the prophecies are, and it's another thing to figure out the when and what order, but it can be done. Otherwise, God would not have given us that instruction in Isaiah 44, 7. And as the day approaches, it's actually becoming easier and easier because we can kind of see the writing on the wall. Okay, so another reason why it's important to God that we know Bible prophecy and can proclaim it is because God wants us to walk by faith. So many say, oh, I don't understand Bible prophecy. I'll just see how it all turns out. Ah, did you catch that? That's walking by sight. When I set my heart to understand it and thinking, okay, it's in the Bible. Jesus knew it. I'm to be Christ-like. You know, just changing that attitude that, okay, I can learn it and I can learn it accurately. And I began to pray that way. God began to teach me. So give God a chance. We want to be people who know Bible prophecy, can proclaim it, be humble enough to say that, you know what, I've learned something new since then. Let me show you what it is. So that's kind of how we approach it. Now, I want to give you some very practical tips if you're brand new at learning Bible prophecy or if you've been studying for a long time, but there's still a lot of loose ends. Let me just share a tip. I reread the Bible as if the pre-tribulation rapture has already occurred. And that helped our team here understand that there is two groups. There's the bride and there's the church. So when you reread the scriptures from that perspective that the pre-trib rapture of the bride has already occurred, I am telling you a whole new layer of Bible prophecy pops out at you. You begin to see other types and shadows that you had not noticed before. Okay, then take the extra step, which I know it takes a lot of time, 
reread the Bible again, as if this time the pre-trib rapture of the bride has happened, the mid-trib rapture of the church has happened, and now the remnant is left behind. The gleanings are left behind. And once again, a whole new layer of Bible prophecy is going to pop out at you. So many of the blanks are going to get filled in. So many details. For instance, you'll notice the entire book of Lamentations is for the remnant. You'll notice that the account of Ruth and Naomi, that doesn't reflect the pre-trib rapture of the bride. Mm -mm. That's the remnant. It's all about the gleanings. It's all about uh, the Christ's millennial reign and the mortals that are repopulating the earth. So anyway, so it's just things like that. You begin to notice that uh, there are numerous supernatural events. When previously the church found all of these supernatural snatchings and we lump them all into one event called one rapture and then we argue, argue, argue about where to put one rapture when if we just study all of these events and we start noticing the details and putting all the ones that are similar in one category and then another category and another, I am telling you, you will become so much more accurate when you're making the, your Bible prophecy interpretations. Okay, I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!